All right, welcome everyone to BYU Basketball Media Day. I'm Kyle Chilton, Director of Bas uh, Media Relations for BYU Basketball. Following my introduction of Coach Rose, we'll invite him up for some questions and answers. Um, and then we'll make the players available here in the studio for some one-on-one -on -one and group interviews. We'd also like to recognize the, some members of the Chinese Basketball Association. They're here as guests of Coach Rose. Uh, coach Rose is entering his 12th season as BYU men's basketball coach with a record of 283-99. and 99. He is second in team history and career victories behind the late Stan Watts, a member of the Basketball Hall of Fame. With a career record a winning percentage of 741, he is eighth among active head coaches and first all-time at BYU. Rose's resume also includes four conference titles, three conference coach of the year honors, 11 20 win seasons, eight 25 win seasons, eight NCAA tournament bids, and three trips to the NIT. BYU is coming off a 26 and 11 season in which the Cougars earned a bid to the NIT and advanced to the semifinals in Madison Square Garden. Three players graduated from that team, including Kyle Collinsworth, the NCAA's season and career triple-double record holder, Chase Fisher, who's among BYU's all-time leaders in single season and career three-point field goals, and Nate Austin, who was the program's all-time leader in career games played. Collinsworth is currently in training camp with the Dallas Mavericks, and Chase Fisher is playing professionally in Italy. Also from that team uh, is Zach Selyus, who is serving an LDS mission in Iowa. The 2016-17 roster includes six players who played on the team last year, including starting center Corbin Kafusi, who is playing football for Kalani Sitake, and will join the, the basketball team later on. Uh, other returning starters include Nick Emery and Kyle Davis. The roster also includes nine players who did not suit up for the Cougars last season, including a return missionary who played as a freshman in 2013-14, a senior transfer, a newly eligible transfer, and six freshmen. Coach Rose will be able to tell you a lot more about those guys. Uh, we'll now bring Coach Mike Rose up to the microphone. Uh, we're not going to pass a microphone around, but as you ask questions, we've got microphones above you. We ask you to speak clearly and state your name and your organization before asking your question. Um, let's see. And that's it. Uh, Coach Rose. All right, thank you, Kyle, um, and thanks for coming today, guys. I, uh, I'm really excited about this year's team, and uh, when you, uh, you hear that there's nine new players uh, on a roster, you, you know that we've got a, a lot of work to do, uh, but this team has, has worked really, really hard. We've had a great summer. Our summer semester of eight weeks was terrific, uh, and then the last four weeks have been really good since school started. And look forward to Monday to our first official day of practice. I think that uh, I'm going to go out on a limb here, but we might be the only team in the NCAA who their starting center for the last two years is playing football. Okay, I, I think that might be uh, fair to say, but uh, it's been fun to watch Corbin the last few games, but we look forward to having him in practice. Uh, not practicing with us, but... Uh, It'll work out for maybe a, a day or two a week since he uh, can come and watch practice since their practice is early. But um, I'm excited about our returning guys, and I just look forward to uh, taking this group of guys with our coaches and trying to, uh, to reach what I feel is uh, a really high ceiling as far as our potential is concerned. So with that, I'll take any questions, uh, and uh, we'll go from there. This is the second year in a row that you've had quite a bit of roster turnover uh, just as far as adapting to new guys coming in and, and just the, the pieces moving around. What does that do for your coaching staff? What do you guys have to do that with? Well, I actually believe that it's probably um, the kind of the new wave of the future. It's always been interesting here at BYU with missionaries coming back and, and, and forth, but uh, it, it looks like uh, players are moving around quite a bit in, uh, in Division One basketball, and so uh, we'll – We'll, we'll just have to kind of deal with, uh, you know, that, that uh, you know, attrition, whatever you call it. I, I, I actually um, um, believe that this group right now is probably a little bit behind our group at this time last year. We had been to Spain. We had practiced for 10 days during the summer. We would played four or five games. Uh, and our focus last year was really on um, – you know, kind of, uh, you know, team, um, team concepts during um, our individual work and times. 
that we had. This, this time has been based all on individuals. Uh, strength and conditioning has been a huge factor for us. Uh, I think that uh, with our new strength coach, with Eric Shork, he's, um, y you look at, you know, the, 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 on paper what they, the improvements, you know, and all their uh, strength testing and conditioning, but that's not what is really impressive to me. What's impressive to me is how they look and uh, how I just believe that they're a stronger uh, group of guys that will help us. Uh, especially in uh, in those tough conference weekends when you go on Thursday, Saturday, back-to-back -back games where uh, you need to win them both to win a championship. So uh, I, I look forward to the challenge. I think that's uh, that's one of the things. It reminds me a little bit of my my days at junior college when we had a new roster every year, it seemed like. What's it like uh, after you know so many years of signing and having guys commit to have them – now back in, uh, on the roster to play together for so many years. Well, I think that that's, uh, that's part of the excitement and the hype of this group is that the, there's you know, a few players that uh, we've waited to, to play together for a long time. In fact, uh, you know, especially when you, look, when you look at TJ and Nick, when they came in my office and committed to us quite a few years ago, at that time we were actually recruiting two or three other players in that class that – have gone to their individual schools and graduated. And now it's our turn to actually get that, uh, that committed class here to play together. So it's been a long wait. Um, but I, I think that uh, the core of that group is, uh, is really good, but we've got great, great players around it that uh, is going to make a, for a really successful season. I, 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 don't, I don't remember having a team that's this inexperienced. They're not really young guys. A lot of them are return missionaries. But... Uh, when you look at actual minutes played at BYU, um, you know it's going to it's going to be a new experience for a lot of guys, and I'm excited to see how it works. Dave, we yeah. kind of ask you every every year, how's your health? How are you feeling? Feel great. Uh, you know, I, I had uh, I, I do look forward to August and September. That scan that I have every year is within a four or five week period, uh, and uh, we go every six months, so it actually works out pretty good when you get a clear scan. And uh, April's my next date, so looks like I'll have a, a great uh, opportunity to be with these guys all, you know, all season, and that's what I look forward to every year. How, yeah. how much of a selling job did you do with LJ to get him here? You had an in because you had played with his dad, but where, where, how did you sell him on BYU? Well, I think it's a perfect fit for LJ, and I think that he recognized that. Uh, when you, we have one senior on our roster in Kyle Davis, and, uh, and then you know we're looking for – we had quite a few guards transfer, and we're looking for uh, an experienced player to, to come and help our, help our team. And I think that uh, – you know, there's so many ways that he can help us. And I think that when he came here and he visited and he felt comfortable with the players and with the atmosphere here, uh, I think he just thought that this would be a great place for him to, to finish his career. And we're really fortunate to have him. Can you assess the point guard position right now? Well, I, the way I look at it right now is that we've got probably uh, four or five, maybe five guys who can actually play the point guard position. I'm, uh, uh, I'm going to let that kind of play out, work itself out as, as we go through our, our preseason. I'm not really as worried about uh, our point guard position as I am just about the way we're going to play with our guards. I, I'm actually really excited um, to have a group of guys who be skilled at that guard position. And if they're point guards or if they're scoring guards or if they're shooting guards, or uh, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of let the other team figure out what's happening with this group because I believe that it's very versatile, skilled group of guys, maybe as good as we've had with the, with the, with the opportunity uh, to actually play that position. So uh, I'm excited about that. But I, I do believe that uh, one of the best teams I ever coached was at a uh, junior college, and I had uh, – four different uh, guys who signed Division One. They all played, and they all signed Division One scholarships, and three of them were player uh, newcomer of the year, and they were all point guards. And uh, 
I think that's a, a good way to play when you've got a lot of guys out there who can run a team and are really skilled. So we'll see how, the, see how it plays out. A lot of uh, preseason polls have Gonzaga and St. Mary's both top 15, top 20. What's your uh, assessment of how the league's going to be this year? Well, I, I think that's, uh, that's probably fair. I mean, Gonzaga obviously has got a, um, a group of returning guys every year, and then they have uh, you know, guys who, who uh, have sat out and then add to their team. And with the big fella getting hurt last year and then getting his year back, I think it, it really kind of solidified their inside game. Uh, St. Mary's got their entire team back from a team that I think won 20, almost 30 games, 28, 29 games. Uh, and that's good for our league. You know, that's good for our league. It's going to be a real challenge uh, to go through the league and, and try to win it. But uh, I know that that's the focus of our guys. And there's no question that what, what how they pushed themselves this summer and, and you know, why they were, um, you know, as determined and dedicated as they were is because uh, that's what we want to do. We want to win the regular season championship. We want to win the conference championship and get to the NCAA tournament, advance as far as we can. And that's what these guys are are focused on. I think, Jay, that uh, when you have nationally ranked teams in your league, that that's, uh, that's a great thing. I think it's, uh, it's an even better thing when we're one of those teams. But uh, with a young group like, like we have, we're going to have to play our way into that. And, uh, but I think Gonzaga and St. Mary's are both worthy of preseason rankings. The uh, Princeton yeah. game came kind of late in the schedule. Could you tell us how that kind of came about? Yeah, I think that you've, you, you know, we announced it a couple of days before um, it was announced as an ESPN marathon game. We had a really difficult time finding a matchup for that game. And uh, um, ESPN wanted a home game here at the Marriott Center. And uh, we, we, were, we felt like maybe it wouldn't happen. We went through probably seven or eight different possibilities clear from the beginning of May all the way till late August, and all of them fell through for one reason or another. And, uh, and then this came about uh, late, and uh, it's, a great, it's a great opportunity for us, and I'm glad we were able to work it out. We had to kind of change a few things, and uh, Norm Parrish is a, a good friend of mine at, at Westminster, and he was one that helped us out and uh, allowed us to move to the BYU-Hawaii game, which was really important to me to get that game in because this is the last year that they're actually having their basketball program. I thought it would be uh, a good thing for us to be able to play them because they always like to come over and play us. Uh, but with Norm at Westminster, we'll play him in an exhibition game in the next two years. So uh, Princeton, if you look at the, f the, the projected RPR ratings for this year based on returning players and new players, they, they have a, uh, you know, a, a, a chart that comes out with everybody's projected RPIs, and, and there's actually the best RPI of our preseason schedule. I think they're in the 30s. So it will be a very uh, uh, interesting opponent to start the first first game of the season. I, I think that, uh, you know, they played West, West Virginia. No, 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 no. They played Virginia Tech uh, in – that quarterfinal, some quarterfinal of the NIT, I think, and uh, and they, uh, you know, there was a game before Virgi Virginia Tech won. Uh, uh, Princeton was ahead the whole game, but Virginia Tech won, and then they came out here and played us. So it was probably uh, the round before the quarters, but uh, played them really well. And that's a film that I've kind of watched when we were talking about maybe the possibility of getting them. So we're excited. A lot of work to do. They've got a lot of returning guys. They took a trip to Italy during the summer, so they played four or five games together as a group. Uh, and so that, that November 14th game will be exciting for all of us to get, get started and get ready to go. Yeah? Do you take credit in any way for uh, Corbin Capusi making that fourth down conversion catch? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't take any credit for that. I, I think that I know he was excited. I've actually seen that look. Uh, on the basketball floor after, you know, a, a block shot or a big dunk of him running off the court, uh, off the field, excited for that catch. But uh, 
I'm, I'm, I'm excited for Corb and for, for Steve, for, for Corb's dad. I, I think that that's a unique opportunity uh, to be able to, to, to coach your son. And, and it, you know, there's no, there's no secret here that, that Corb wanted to play football at BYU his whole life. And uh, so I'm, what I'm hoping is that our team is ready for him when he comes because he'll be a great addition. He's gained a lot of weight. His, his strength, his confidence – uh, should just be because he's got experience and, and and we can really use his experience, especially at the time that he actually joins our team. Yeah. Can you address the post post depth and maybe the continuation this year of the in out game? Well, I, I think that uh, every year, you know, we we really look for we, we we're a pretty guard oriented program over the last three or four years, and that's because we've had you know all American type type guards and I hope we continue to have that and I hope we still have that where I think we can really make improvement is on our front line and to me there's no question that we we have the deepest most talented front line that we've had since I've been here on paper we'll see how it plays out okay in uh on the court but I'm we've adjusted quite a few things offensively to use that we've adjusted quite a few things defensively I think we'll have bigger stronger more physical players on the floor for more minutes during a game. And I think that uh, that should help us, especially to be more consistent. We've been good. We've had good teams, but we haven't been consistent enough to actually get what we want, and that's our, that's our goal. You've had some pretty deep backcourts. How does this year compare to previous years? Well, I, I, I love the talent of our backcourt. The experience, we'll, we'll see. You know, uh, when you take uh, the, the the two most experienced players have never played at BYU. Well, uh, you know Nick played 36, 37 games last year, and Elijah played quite a few games at Elon, and LJ's played at Baylor and at Houston, and and that's basically the group of three guys who have a, a lot of Division One experience. Uh, the rest of the guys I feel have uh, a great deal of talent and uh, their ability to to help this team and to play right, right away. You're talking about, you know, T.J. Haas, who's won four high school state championships uh, and I think is ready to play right now, uh, along with uh, uh, Steve Bayo, who, who played, you know, was one of, one of the high, highest scoring players ever to come out of the state of Washington. And uh, Colby uh, Leafson from Atlanta. These guys uh, will really help our roster. But uh, Davin Gwynn is a guy who has had an unbelievable summer and – We've played a lot of minutes and won a lot of games with guys like Dav and what they do and what they add to our uh, our roster. So, I, like I said, I, I'm, I'm excited about the that, that guard line. And I look forward to just getting going and seeing how day to day to day that determines. I, I always say this, and I think sometimes the players uh, wonder if it's actually accurate, but they decide who plays. I mean, they decide who plays by how hard they work, how effective they are, how consistent they are. And we get to the, you know, the first of November, and uh, October's kind of worked itself out. So right now it's an exciting time for everybody. Anything else? We, we passed by the annex on the way here. It looks like it's pretty close, yeah. but any updates on that? When you like that? Yeah, that's pretty nice. It's pretty nice yeah. yeah, it is nice. And it's not going to be finished until uh, first of December. So I would imagine we'd move in there um, maybe during finals week or during the break of the semester. But uh, there's a chance we're going to practice in there next week, and that's, that excites all of us. The gym looks you know, terrific, and, and the contractor is in the process right now of trying to put, put the finished coat on the floor and finish the actual gymnasium part of it. And... Uh, uh, on Monday, we practice in the Marriott Center, but on Tuesday, um, our homecoming spectacular group moves in there for about 10 or 12 days. And so uh, the plan right now is that we'll practice at uh, 2.30 in the Annex Gym on uh, October 4th. But it's on schedule. It'll be finished the 1st of December. Great. All right, thank you very much, and... Uh, Appreciate you coming and look forward to a great season.